I'm going to stay with Bernie Sanders. My next guest says he's got real trouble, financial trouble, in his past. And it would be a real problem if he became president. Eric Schiffer is with us. All right, take me through this. What is in Bernie Sanders' personal financial past that makes us call it a financial train wreck? Go. Well, Stuart, it's a financial train wreck. It is. I think that what you're talking about is a guy who really couldn't hold a job. He was uh, barely able to have a paycheck. Uh, if just few times. He was on the unemployment line. This is a guy that was known to be broke up until he was 40 years old. He would actually take a, a long extension cord from his apartment because his electricity would be shut off. He'd take that extension cord and plug it into the basement. This is who we're dealing with. And so this is the guy that we want to run the finances of this country. Hmm. Do we go, do board members go to the unemployment line to hire their CEO? No, I okay. mean, come on, I, it's crazy. Got, and the well, problem is, I think one, I think I, I one got, of the I just reasons... Want to add this. Eric, hold on a second. I'm sorry, we're, we're talking yeah, across sure. purposes here. Quickly, uh, we've got a new report coming out that Bernie Sanders could have up to $65,000 worth of debt on his credit cards. Now, I believe that may be his Senate credit card. It's his personal oh, credit no, no, card. No, 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 I take it back. No, no, no. Uh, show has been digging. It is, I've been looking at the form. It's his personal debt. $65,000 worth of personal debt on his personal credit card. That's the potential. That's as high as it can go. You have to check a range on the form for the government and Congress. That's what happens. I was in the Senate. I'm sorry. So up, up to 65 grand. But okay. it's personal debt. It's personal. Well, what do you make of that, Eric? Well, I think some Democrats would say that's why he's the perfect guy to be president. He's, he's very familiar with tremendous debt. I think it's crazy. I think it makes no sense to hire someone, to put someone in that role. First of all, look, he's a socialist. I mean, he's a self-admitted socialist. And for, the, and for millennials to be pushing this guy, I think the reason that they're doing it, Stuart, is that they don't really understand socialism. I don't think they get it. I really don't think they've connected the dots. They don't want their Uber uh, to be 30 minutes late like what would happen at the DMV for most people. They don't want their Instagram to shut off for a week. They don't want Snapchat to go dark. That's what's going to happen. That could happen in a socialistic society. They're pointing to Sweden as the example, but, but what they don't understand is, yes, there's socialism in Sweden, and yes, businesses are able to be free. But the problem is they were socialists, and then now, now they've moved to more of a free capitalistic society because it didn't work. Okay. So I don't think that people really understand what all this means. Certainly Hillary Clinton doesn't get it. She'd be talking about it. This is serious. Okay. We need to wake up. Entrepreneurs have built this country. When we take away their motivation, when we demoralize them, when we criminalize, when we make them the bad guy, the country has big problems, okay, and that's Eric, what we got to avoid. You're pounding this one, and we heard you. Thank you very much indeed, Eric Schiffer. Come back soon. Gotcha. Thank you, sir.